Happy Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to another Tuesday Night Live with independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator Teresa Harper. I'm located in uh, Sheridan, Oregon in the United States, and I'm so glad that you have joined me tonight. Uh, let's go ahead and see who we have on. And just give everybody a minute or two to find us. And let's see. Let's go. Come on, Facebook. Cooperate with me. Okay. I'm not finding my video. There we are. Okay. Just had to refresh the page once again. Hello, Laura. Hello, Cynthia. Thank you for joining me. Let's see. I look a bit crooked. Let's see if I can fix that or mess it up. One of the two. Yep, went the wrong way. Of course I did. Okay. Let's see if that fixes it at all. Oh, much better. Okay, now let's see. We can get this to go more this way. I can have a little more room. You know, it's funny. Before I go live, I try to do this, but you can't really see in the tiny little camera until you actually have it up. <sighs> the trials, the trials of Facebook. Let's see if I can move this over just a titch more. There we go. I think I'm good, actually. There we go. Yay. Okay, good. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, yep, good spot, excellent. All right, as you can tell, tonight we're gonna to be using the wild ferns. But I did want to remind you all that the um, last chance sale went live today. Things are selling out. And don't forget that I sent out that list of the um, price increases that are coming in the new catalog. And some of those items are actually selling out too. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the low inventory bundles, which by the way, if a bundle is carrying over, if the products in a bundle are carrying over, they are not carrying over as a bundle and you will not receive the bundle price in the new catalog. So if you have anything on your list that is carrying over as a bundle, such as the Everyday Details Bundle. Now's the time to get it because it's on low inventory. And once the catalog goes live on May 1st, you will not be able to get it in a bundle. Okay, so we've got some inks that are on low inventory. This is the most important part right here. The low inventory paper, this is already where we're at, Garden Green Cardstock, Melon Mambo, Gold Foil Sheets, Mossy Meadow, Balmy Blue, Misty Moonlight, the Basic White 12 by 12. So far, we're still good with the Basic White 8 and a half by 11. But the Basic White envelopes are um, on low inventory. So you might want to look at those. Okay? The Wonderful Thoughts uh, Photopolymer Stamp Set. If you haven't got that bundle, you'll want to get it now. Take your pick putty refills and the deckled circles and the scoring blades. Okay, so that's just a quick little look. You can go back and watch this later. I don't want to take up too much time with that, but I did want to remind you that with those price increases, things will start to sell out and they most likely won't get replaced before the beginning of May. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a card. We have one card and one box tonight. And let's go ahead and get that started. Okay, so let me move my 
iPad out of the way completely. Let's get our packet of supplies here. So we're in addition to the wild ferns bundle, we're going to be using the fern 3D embossing folder. Okay. This is in the annual catalog. It will be carrying over. We're also using the nested essentials dies. We're going to use the largest one of the uh, curved corner rectangles. And then for the inside of the card, I'm using comforting thoughts. This is a 14 piece photopolymer stamp set that was released with the online exclusives at the beginning of March. So very good stamp set. We're going to be using that for the inside. And then our ink pad colors are Pretty Peacock, Shaded Spruce, and Garden Green. Okay, so let's set these items out of our way. Bring in our pieces. We have a card base in Garden Green. This is five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. And I have already embossed this with the Fern 3D embossing folder. I did want to show you how I do that so that it's um, side to side or full card front. So what I do is I take my card stock and I lay it in here along the black line that Stampin' Up! has put in there for us. And I look to see where the edge of the 3D embossing ends. And I try to put my card base just about there. Okay. And then I sh close that up. And I put it on my platform and run it through this way. Okay. It's pretty easy. And we are going to get our scoring, our Simply Scored tool to fold this because it is embossed it doesn't want to necessarily fold how you want it to so i'm going to just put this up in the corner here and it was pre-scored but by pushing everything up in the corner like so i can make sure everything's lined up and then grab my bone folder and give that a good crease and all of my corners will line up perfectly. Or all of my edges. Okay. So we've got that ready to go. This is actually going to be a landscape card. We're going to set that aside because we don't need it at the moment. And we're going to grab our packet of supplies here. And I've got a piece of basic white that is three and a half by four and three quarters. And this is going to be um, our background layer. So I'm going to bring in a piece of scratch paper here. I could just stamp right on my glass mat, but I don't want to clean it so many times. So I'm going to skip that part. I'm just going to put a little piece of paper under here. We're going to be using that in a minute. So we're going to start with garden green. No, we're not. Not for this part, we're not. I'm starting backwards for this part. I'm going to start with Pretty Peacock. And I'm going to take the curly ferned image here. Ooh, and I got that kind of inky, so I need to be careful. And I'm going to randomly stamp this on my card. Okay. Now I'm going to close that up. I'm going to set that aside. Take my shaded spruce. I'm going to take my large fern. I'm going to ink that up. Yeah, I guess it's stamping. It just didn't look quite right. And we're going to stamp some of these down. randomly okay so we've got that and then we're going to bring in garden green <clears throat> and 
And we don't need to worry about the middle too much because the middle is going to be covered up. But we are going to use a little bit of this outer space. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of these like this. And I think, let's see, let's put some more down here, up here. Remember, this is random. It's not supposed to look um, like it has any pattern to it. Okay, let's, I'm going to clean this a little bit because I don't want the full fern. I only want part of this fern. Um... So let's, I just want to put a little bit over here. You know what? It's okay. I'll just do it this way because it's not going to show anyway, all of it. There we go. So we've got that. Now we can put all of those aside. And I'm going to bring in my blending brush here. And I'm going to bring in my garden green. And I'm going to get rid of this. I'm actually going to use this because it will hold my cardstock still. And I'm just going to dab that on my glass mat here. And then I'm going to very gently blend, pick up some of that ink. I just don't want this to be stark white, but I don't want it to be a dark green either. So I'm just going to use up all of that ink that I put on my glass mat there. And that's going to control how much ink goes on my paper. Okay. And you noticed how that uh, silicone sheet held my paper still. So this is what our finished product looks like. And we're going to set that aside. And then we're going to bring in our pieces. So I've already done the die cutting for this. So out of Pretty Peacock, I cut the largest curved corner rectangle. And we're going to put that on our card. And then I also cut from the die set, I cut two each of this die and this die, and I did those in basic white. Okay. So I've already colored three of my ferns. And I'm going to show you how I did this. Okay. So we need the opposite one here there okay I want to go let's uh we're gonna start with our garden green again and I'm gonna ink this up and let's see I've got garden green. we're gonna go with garden green and I'm just gonna ink this up right here making sure that I get all of that. And then I'm gonna come back with a little bit more ink and I'm just gonna pounce on that to give it a little bit of texture, okay? Now you would need to do this with all four of yours. Um, I varied where I started on the ends in that I did not start on for garden green on each end, as you can tell on this one. I started with garden green on the opposite. With this particular one, I put garden green in the center. So I tried to mi mix them up as to which fern received which colors. So I can put this away for the moment. I'm gonna need that again in, in, in just a minute. And I'm gonna go to the shaded spruce. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna put some of that down. And where do I have my shaded spruce on these? So let's go with shaded spruce on, let's go with shaded spruce in the middle here. So I'm just gonna color that up, 
and I'm being trying to not get a bunch of ink on here, but it's okay. So we're going to do that. And again, pounce a little. Okay, and then we're going to move on to our final color of Pretty Peacock. And I'm going to take another brush, get some more Pretty Peacock, and add this here. And one of the things that you want to do is try to get some different depths in color on all of your fern pieces, parts, and especially between the different pieces here. We don't want everything to look uniform. Okay, and I can see here, this is pretty peacock, and I missed that little spot right there. Let's go back and add that. Okay, so we've got all those. Now finally, to finish this off, I didn't want a white frame. So I've taken some post-it note tape and I'm going to put the post-it note tape just at the edge of the frame. I'm not going to actually put it on top of the frame because I don't want white on my frame. So I'm going to have probably just a little bit of air here. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And if you look at that, you can see that I have a little bit of hole there from those ferns. Okay, now we're going to go back to our garden green. And I am going to fill in this frame. And again, I'm going to vary my color. Okay. So now I have my pieces done, and I think, well, no, I can't quite put that away. I need a scrap piece of white for my sentiment. Let's do that now. Take this post-it tape off carefully. So I don't want to rip my fern. Okay, and then there's what I have. All right, and then I just repeat that three time, three more times, and we're good. All right, so I was pretty, there's my piece right here. Got a piece of basic white here. And I'm going to take my sentiment, which comes from the Wild Fern Stamp Set. And I'm going to take Shaded Spruce. I'm going to ink this up. And then I'm going to stamp it down. Beautiful. Okay. And then we're going to take the second largest stitched ring rectangle here. And we're going to run this through our mini cut and emboss machine. Okay, so I'm just going to center that up. Put some tape on there. I'm going to go ahead and wipe up my mess. So I think we're done inking. Deal. And then we're going to grab our mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Pull this out. Plate one, plate two, another plate two. If you're having trouble with your mini machine and your base plates, try using one of the gray plates instead of the white plate and you'll be a whole lot happier. I often have to use the gray plate, or had to use the gray plate with my white 
mini that I had before I got the boho blue. Okay, so now our sentiment is done. I have ink on my finger, so let's not touch that too much. And now we're ready to start putting our card together. Okay, so we're going to add this to the center of our card layer. Just going to add this right here. Try to get that centered down as best I can. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, I'm going to open up my card to make sure I've got it right. And then usually I use liquid glue when I have a 3D embossing, but today I found this was holding quite well, so I'm just going to use this stamp and seal. Center that up. Okay. And then we can start adding our frame. So this can be a bit tricky. So I'm going to put my opposites, and I want these ones on top. Okay, these ones on top. No, these ones on top. Never mind. I want these ones on top because I cut some white off of here. And I want those to go on the bottom so you don't notice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these down kind of where I want them. Let's see if that's about centered and it looks pretty good. And then it, of course you've got to move. Okay, let's do this again. Okay, I think it'll be okay if I just do this. Now I'm going to take some liquid glue. And I'm just going to put a little bit on here. I'm going to lay this down. Try and center that up. Like so. Okay, I'm, I barely set that down so I can move it if I need to. And then I'm going to put some liquid glue on here. I'm only putting the glue on the frame because I want my fern pieces to be free flowing. And then I'm just going to line these up and that moved. So let's set that down. See if that looks straight. This is the hardest part. Right here, and once you get the first one down, you're good as gold. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go ahead and solidify that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go back with my other two. I'm going to add these frames on top, lining up the corners and the edges. This is where the liquid glue really helps you because you can just slip that right in even with the edges of the previous frame. Put some more glue down. And then we're going to add this one. Slide that one right into place there. And right into place there. Okay. So now we have our nice foliage ferned 
confirmed foliage frame here. And we're gonna take our heartfelt condolences sentiment because I thought this would make a really nice sympathy card. And I'm gonna take and add dimensionals and I'm gonna pop that right in the center of that frame. Okay. And then finally, to finish off the outside of this card, we're going to use one of the products that is on the last chance list. And that's the Festive Pearls. And I'm not sure, these might have already sold out. I'm not 100% sure. I'm using the soft succulent ones. And we're going to one here and one there and then we'll just put one down here and there is the front of our card okay really not that difficult like i said the hardest part is getting those that first piece of the frame the first two pieces of the frame down so for the inside <clears throat> I've used the comforting thoughts and I took the two sentiments that say I don't have all the right words to say and wishing you comfort. Okay, and then we're just going to add this to the inside of our card. And I just took those ferns in the same three colors that I stamped previously and put those three in the bottom right corner and one in the upper left, just to give it a little bit of decoration and interest. And I've done the same thing with the envelope. So here is our matching set. Okay, that is our first project for tonight. I hope you liked it. I hope it inspires you to make one. Thank you guys for all the hearts. I'm going to reset this because I'm seeing more people on, I think, than what I'm getting comments. So anyway, here we go. That's that. Let's put this aside and we'll start our 3D project. Okay, let me get some of these things that I don't need out of the way. Okay. Of course, our 3D product project again uses the same stamp set. But for this one, this is what we're making. Okay. And then it holds a Baduco Choco Biscuit. I actually got mine at... Um, Winco Foods, but hopefully you can find them there, or I think you can find them on Amazon too. So we're going to start with a piece of um, Pebbled Path cardstock, and this piece is cut to, let me show you the template, it is cut to five and a quarter by eight inches. Pull that down a bit. I'm going to grab my Simply Scored tool. Move that off to the side. And we're going to start on the five and a quarter inch side, which is the short side. Remember, five and a quarter by eight card stuck. We're going to score this at seven eighths of an inch on each side. I actually made this box in three different sizes. I made it in a four, three quarter inch deep, seven eighths inch deep, and one inch deep to find just the perfect depth for the um, biscuits, because I don't like mine to be floppy. So this is the one that fit the best. Um, and on the eight inch side, we're gonna score it at seven eighths, three and an eighth, four inches. Oops, you guys can't see the measurements here, sorry. So seven eighths, 
three and an eight, four inches, six and one quarter inches, and seven and one eighth inch. Okay, so we'll put that away. This part that has the two seven eighths inch pieces is the front of your box, which makes this the top of your box and this the bottom of your box, okay? So let's go ahead and burnish and score on all of our, fold and burnish on all of our score lines. Yeah, I'm having a hard time talking, apparently. Getting the proper words out. Hope everybody had a good day. Hello, Jennifer. Jennifer. Everett gives the card a thumbs up. Thank you, Everett. I'm glad you liked it. Okay, so we've got that. Now, again, this is our front. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to turn my template over and I'm going to cut here and here. I'm going to take off this corner. Okay, and I'm going to leave a straight edge here. Yeah, let's do this right. I put a little bit of an angle cut there got to get it down the right way. Straight edge here. I'm cutting just to the right of the score mark for a straight edge. And then I'm going to come over to this side tab. I'm going to angle it just a bit and cut off that corner. Okay. Then I'm going to move over and I'm going to cut up here. And I'm going to angle cut that score line so that I have a glue tab. <clears throat> then I'm going to move down to the next set of score lines. And again, I'm going to cut up straight on the rectangle, angle cut on the square. And I'm going to repeat that at the next score mark. And then I'm going to flip this 180 degrees. And I'm going to repeat that here. Cut up straight on the rectangle, angle on the square. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, so I don't get confused. I found it easier to start gluing at this point so that I knew what to do, okay, and what not to do because I messed this up once. So, this is the front, and this is a reinforced front so i find that this little piece is just a little tiny bit too long sometimes so i just trim off a tiny little bit it doesn't matter it's on the inside of the box no one's going to notice okay now i'm going to take a three quarter inch punch here and i'm going to measure this at one and three quarters you don't have to measure you can eyeball I don't like to do that because I can't eyeball it and then it drives me crazy. So I'm just going to take a little, make a little mark there with my scoring tool. Okay, so that it's right at the fold there. And then I'm going to take my three quarter inch punch, which by the way is retired. So you'll have to find one on Amazon if you don't already have one or Joann's or something like that. And I'm going to cut that while it's, or Give that a little bit of a circle cut while it's folded. Okay. Now let's go ahead and bring in our tear tape. Because like I said, I didn't want to get confused on which was which. <clears throat> so I'm going to put a little bit of score uh, tear and tape right here at the front of this tab. And then I'm gonna turn this over. 
to the outside. And now I'm going to write along the full, right along the uh, scoring line there as close as I can without going over on the glue tab side. I'm going to put a couple of pieces of tear tape on each of these four glue tabs that I have. Okay, and I'm trying to get it as close. to the scoring mark as I can without going over. And what that does is it makes your box um, hold together nicely at the seam rather than gape, which I hate. I don't like the gap. I want it to just be solid. So this is why I do it this way. Now you can use liquid glue if you choose, or you could use Stamp and Seal Plus. I can't make that stuff work, so I don't. I gave up on it. I tried and tried and just couldn't get it to work without tearing my paper. Now I'm burnishing down my um, tear tape so that it gives a better seal. If you're having boxes and things come apart, it's probably because you didn't do that step. Okay, before I remove that, I'm going to flip this over, remove my tear tape here, fold this over, and give that a good burnish. Okay. Then I'm going to remove all the rest of the score tape, uh, this tear and tape that I have. I don't know why I keep calling it score tape. Scoring lines, tape, tear and tape. I don't know. Okay, so I've got all of those off. Now these are going to form the sides to the bottom of our box. And so I don't mess that up. I'm going to start right here in the center pieces because I want to make sure that I fold them toward the pieces that we've just been working on and stay away from this piece that isn't finished. Okay, so I'm just going to fold this up and I'm going to have the cut edge meet the score line and again the cut edge to the score line on the back side here. And then I'm going to bring round my front and I'm gonna repeat that again and again on the opposite side. Okay, now I've got those. I'm gonna go ahead and fold that back a little bit. I'm gonna come in with my bone folder and give those a good burnish so that that tear and tape adheres well to both sides of that card stock. Okay, now as you can see, this is not going to work. So we are going to go ahead, we're going to flip our template around here. And now we need to cut off these corners. Completely. So I'm going to remove those corners, cutting on the inside of the score line to the rectangle so that I have a nice finished edge without that little um, indentation from the score. Okay, so at this point, we're going to round the corners with a corner rounder. You can use any corner rounder that you have. I've got an old, old retired one from Stampin' Up. It's my trusty corner rounder. Okay, now we're going to, again, we're going to trim these just a tiny little bit. The side tabs. Maybe take off an eighth of an inch. Okay, 
And then this is not going to want to fold inside because these tabs are, they just don't want to cooperate. So we're going to take and do an angle cut. Okay. And then I'm going to angle cut again from the inside to the outside. Okay. And I'm going to repeat that at the back, but not quite as deep. Okay, so both of these. Just so they'll fold in a bit. And then I find, I like to take a little off and then see if it's going to fold in. And if it doesn't want to fold in very well, which this one does not, then I'll go back and take just a little bit more off. You don't want to take too much though, because if you do, then your box will want to pop open. Okay. And sometimes you got to go back, take a little more of this off, just so it'll fold in there without getting in the way. Okay. So there we are. Now let's go ahead and put our little cookies in there. And then we'll just decorate that up. Okay. Let me get all these little scraps out of my way. Okay. So again, here's that template. And now all we need to do is decorate it. <clears throat> so we're going to take a piece of the delightfully eclectic designer series paper. This is the uh, 48 sheet pack, 12 by 12. It's currently half price. Um, so it's like 15 something and you got 48 sheets. And it's an incredible value right now. So let's go ahead. We're going to add this to our box top. And this piece of DSP I cut at, did I write that down? Mm -hmm. I'm usually pretty good about that, but apparently I did not. Let's measure though. Get this on here. I made this so it had just a, a very small border. This is only an eighth of an inch smaller. I've got this little piece that's bugging me. Where did I set those scissors down at? It's just a little Chad thing here, just hanging on, making me crazy. Okay, snip that puppy off. Cannot have that. Okay, so let's get this in here. And now, why don't you want to go in? them perfectly a minute ago. There we go. Okay. So we've got this. This will be unstubborn. Okay, there we go. Just have to keep moving it around, make it work. Okay, so you're going to need some scrap card stock. Why do I have two of these? This one's too small. Uh, well, actually, this one's not too small. This is what it would look like if you had a quarter, quarter inch border. So this piece is two by three and a quarter. And that's actually what I put on this box front. But then I thought it had a little bit too much space for my liking. So I went to two and an eighth by three and three eighths so that I had a smaller border of the pebbled path. So you can tell me which one you like better. 
the smaller border or the larger. Okay, so out of the fern um, dies, the wild fern dies, I took this section right here. I, I took one of these and I cut this in petal pink. Actually, I cut them both. I cut them both. This one I cut in petal pink. Okay, so I cut this in petal pink. And then I cut this in the crushed curry. This is this one in the crushed curry. And then I took a little piece of basic white and a little piece of basic gray and I cut just the outside section here of this particular die. Just put a little scrap on there and cut it. Okay, and you're gonna tell me what you think I should do here, okay? Which you like better. So on this one, I took the white, the basic white piece for the center, and I brought in one of the fern stamps, which I'm gonna have to clean. Okay, I brought in a fern stamp. And I brought in basic gray because our color palette is petal pink, crushed curry, and pebbled path, not basic gray. And I took the pebbled path and I put this white fern down and I inked that up with pebbled path and then I stamped off and I stamped on. And I did it again, and that's how I colored my fern, okay? And then we're going to take this, and we're just going to turn this over and snip it from the frame. I don't need that. I just need this piece, okay? I'm going to do the same thing over here, but this time I want this piece. So you could make several of these boxes and just keep using the different pieces. So I'm going to flip that frame over. This is the crushed curry one. And I'm just going to cut that off. Okay, and I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to take my petal pink one, and I want this piece. Okay. And... I'm going to cut that from the frame, like so. And then I'm going to bring these back over, set those aside for another project. I'm going to clean my stamp. I'm going to clean my other stamp, too, because I want this one, too. Okay. And then to give these a bit of texture, I'm going to use the same colored ink and put some texture down on my ferns. This time I'm going full strength. Okay, so I've got just a little bit of texture and you might not be able to tell, to tell but in person, you can see that texture. Okay, so we've got that. And let's go ahead and grab our other fern. And our petal pink. And just randomly stamp that down until you think you have enough. Okay, so we've got those pieces. And then let's go ahead and put a little texture on here just in case we decide to use this piece. But again, for that one, we're gonna need Pebble Path. So let's clean that real quick. Actually, nope, we're gonna use this piece. 
for that. This is the background image. And that'll put some good texture on there. I don't know if it'll show. Yep. Now I'm going to have to go full straight. Okay, there we go. So now we've got that. And now our pieces are pretty much ready. Let's go ahead and stamp. Well, I've already stamped the sentiment. What I did was I took the uh, petal pink and the you are greatly appreciated. This is from the Wild Fern stamp set. So I'm gonna, I stamp that up on petal pink in the pebbled path. And then I took the smallest of the sentiment dies and I put that on there very carefully because it barely fits, taped it down and ran it through the die cut machine. While I was doing that through the die cut machine, I also cut the second smallest or the second largest, the one in the middle, also in basic white for a frame. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this together. Let's finish this up. Let's bring back in our box. Let's go ahead and put our sentiment together. And so all I'm going to do is use a bit of stamp and seal here and put that down. And then we're going to add this to the basic white. Try to make an even border and be sure to put it on straight. Okay. So we've got that piece. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this on first. Okay. So that I know where to put my pieces. So I'm going to put this up on dimensionals. I'm going to lay these pieces down right here. These two outside pieces are the important ones. For placement. Okay, and then I'm going to take my wax paper backings off. And I'm going to put this down like so. And then we're going to add these. And you could actually cut these with the adhesive sheets, but you know, why would I do that? I'm just gonna put some little dots and I'm gonna leave the tops open for a little bit of interest. And then I'm just gonna slide this up under here, like so. And I'm going to grab the crushed curry one. Let's do dab of glue here and there. Okay, and then we're going to tuck this in here like that. Okay, now here's where you need to make a decision. Do we want to go with the pebbled path on pebbled path? Or do we want pebbled path on basic white? What do you think? Tell me white or pebbled? And we'll see what y'all say. Okay, white or pebbled? Okay, I'm gonna refresh this because I'm not seeing anything come through. Um, okay, people, you have to make a decision.
those fingers on those keyboards and tell me white or pebbled. White or pebbled. Are you guys answering and I'm just not seeing the comments come through? I know, you have to be. Let's see. Let me see if I can bring... Oh, pebble. There you go. Now I see Cynthia's pebble. Okay, I've got one. One for pebble. Anyone else? Laura pebbled. Okay, that's two. I'm good with that. Well, let's go ahead and put the ink on or the glue on here and finish this up. Let's put this down here like this, kind of at an angle. And then we're going to use the classic matte dots. These are also on the last chance list. I love these things. I'm going to miss them. Okay, so let's take, I'm going to take a large over here. And a small right there. Nope, too much in line. I can't do that. I got that in the wrong spot there. Come on, come on. You got to go up here. There we go. Looked like it was in a straight line. I can't have that. And then we're going to put one down here. Okay. And there you have it. There is our second project, a little biscuit treat box that you could give for any occasion simply by changing the decorations and the colors. All right. Does anybody have any questions they'd like answered? Okay, looks good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate that. Oh, let's bring back in that card. I think I like the pebbled path a little better than the basic white myself. But there we have it. Our, let's open this up so you can see what's in it. Our little Choco Biscuit box. Of course, you could put other things in here. I actually think that you could put a fun size candy bar in there pretty easily. Um, and maybe some dope chocolates. I don't know. If you make the box and you put something else different in it, please share with us in the craft social, that in the group social that we have so we can all see what you've made. And until then, I will see you next Tuesday night, same time, 7 p.m. Pacific time, with another couple of projects. Thank you so much. Good night.